Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is the second part of the Car Chase game development series. In case you've not watched part 1, there will be a card for you right here. By the end of this video, you will have the how to play controls manual ready along with the obstacle clone creation and movement. When I say obstacle here, I'm talking about the traffic cars that the player will have to dodge. Let's start off in the manual sprite. When the green flag is clicked, we of course need to hide it. The sprite should only show if the player clicks on the controls button in the lobby. If the actual game is going on, then the sprite should definitely stay hidden. So if the game setting at any point is playing, then we hide the sprite. Since we want the game instructions menu to come in front of all the other sprites, we add in a go to front layer. Just like we did for the buttons, the manual sprite will have its own animation. When the mouse hovers over it, we will enlarge it slightly and make it brighter. If the sprite is touching the mouse pointer, then we set the brightness effect to 5. We change size by 110 minus size, the whole divided by 5. This line of code will work similarly as the changes in the X position that we made in the last video. The objective is to increase the size animatedly to 110. Now, when the sprite size is 110, the change in size will equate to 0. Thus, the size remains constant. However, if the size is less than 110, say 100, then the size will incrementally increase by 2 each tick until it gets to 110. Now we have to remember that the additional size is nested and has to be taken into consideration. At first, the sprite will increase its size quickly and then it increments slower and slower. The size will never reach 110, but when it gets close enough, scratch rounds it off. Within the else statement, we change the max size to 100. Now we don't want any brightness effect if the mouse pointer isn't touching the sprite, so we clear all the graphic effects. In the last video, we programmed each button within the intro screen. When the controls button was pressed, we broadcasted a message to signal to the sprite that it had to show itself. So when the controls message is received, we go to the center of the stage and change the size to 20%. Remember that the size changes which we programmed in the forever loop will kick in right away. The size will quickly change to 100 if we leave it at that. The sprite has remained hidden till now so we can show it. We give it a 1 second time lag for the animation and then wait until either the space key is pressed or the screen is clicked. These are the two gestures that will tell the sprite to close itself. We want the sprite to fly out upwards so we have a repeat until Y position is 300. Until that happens, we will simply change Y by 10. 300 is right at the top, and when the sprite gets there, it can hide. All right, so if you test out the code now by clicking on the controls button, the instructions manual should come up and hide when closed. Next, we can move on to the obstacle sprite. We have a when green flag is clicked, followed by a forever loop. Within this forever loop, we can put all of the code stuffed in in a single script. However, that is quite inconvenient and we can use blocks instead. The first block will be called set difficulty. Make sure to check run without screen refresh. The purpose of this function is to decide how fast the incoming traffic should come up at the car. This can be done based on the difficulty variable we set earlier in the difficulty button, but more on that later. The second block will be called clone creation. This function also takes into account the difficulty, but instead performs the act of deciding which clone to use and how long to wait before generating another clone. Within the forever loop, we first set difficulty. We check if the game setting is playing, and if it is, we use the clone creation function. We can use the set difficulty block outside the if then condition because we want it to update all the time, including when the player is in the lobby screen. Of course, we wouldn't want cars coming down the road when the player is still in the lobby, so the second part of the code should be a no-brainer. Let us now set up the first block. We have four if then else conditions. The first condition will be if the difficulty variable is set to easy. 
At this point, we create a variable for all sprites called speed. This variable will control how fast the obstacles move across the y-axis of the screen. In the first case, we set speed to 10. If the difficulty is medium, then we will want the speed to be slightly more so that the clones move faster. Thus, we set speed to 15. In case the difficulty is hard, we set the speed to 25. Finally, if the difficulty is extreme, we set the speed to 35. Now you can play around with these numbers to see what works best for you. If your laptop is reasonably fast, then these numbers will work out great. The setup that we'll be using will be similar in the clone creation function, but we can use if then blocks instead of if then else blocks. This is where we are going to be deciding how fast each additional clone is going to be generated. If the difficulty is easy, then the player should have more time to dodge the cars and there should be fewer cars on the road. To achieve this, we wait a random of 2-3 to three seconds and then create a clone of the sprite. If the difficulty is medium, then we do the same thing, but wait a random of 1-1.5 to 1 seconds. If the difficulty is hard, then we wait a random of 0.5 to 1 second. If the difficulty is extreme, then the clone should be generated almost instantly, so we wait a random of 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. If you want to make the clone generation process slower for any of the difficulty levels, you simply have to increase the wait period. If you want to decrease the time taken by the clone generation process and make it faster so that there are more cars on the screen, then you have to lower the wait lags. Alright, now we create a third block called clone init. This block will set up the preliminary aspects of the clone, meaning the clone setup. The movement will be done within the main clone script. The car should look as if they are moving in the same direction as the player. This means they have to point upwards. So, we point in direction 0. It should appear as if the player is moving upwards, but we are using a scrolling illusion. The player will more or less stay in the same place, but everything else will move downwards. Therefore, at the beginning, the Y position will be at the top, about 203. Following this, we show the sprite. At this point, we have to decide which costume the clone should use. We can give it a 50% chance of being a police car and a 50% chance of being a normal car. In case a random value from 1 to 2 is 1, we switch the costume to cop. If this is not true, then we set the costume to be a random number from 2 to 4. If you take a look at the costumes tab, you will see that there is a police car along with a green car, a grey car and a yellow car. None of these costumes have their names numbered, so you may be wondering what happens if we switch the costume to a number for which there is no corresponding name. The scratch process will work as follows. It first checks if there is a costume name with the matching value. In this case, let's say we tried switching costume to 4. The scratch interpreter first checks if there is any costume name of 4. If there is such a name, then it will switch the costume of the sprite to that matching name. However, in this case, there is no matching name. Now the scratch interpreter checks if there is a costume number that exists with that name. There is a costume 4 in this case, so it will switch costume to that. Here we need a variable that will store the relative x position of the clone. For this, we will create a variable for this sprite only called x. We are fine with the clones being placed anywhere along the x-axis, so we set x to a random value from negative 220 to positive 220. That's what we have for the clone initialization. We can use that block in the main clone script and then move on to the main forever loop. We set x to x position of car divided by 3 plus x, the whole multiplied by negative 1. Now you are probably wondering why we are multiplying the result by negative 1. The reason is simply relative motion. If you are traveling in a car and you turn to the left, what you really see is the other cars moving to the right. Therefore, if the car should move by one pixel to the right, the obstacle should move by one pixel to the left. If we want to change the x position of the car by n pixels, the x position of the obstacle should change by minus n pixels. If the obstacles are at the edges, then there is no point in showing them. 
If the x position is less than negative 243 or the x position is greater than 243, we hide the clone. Otherwise, we show it. We will want to end the clone movements if the y position is less than negative 202. This basically means that the clone is at the bottom and has completed its movement, so we can delete it. The clone will only have to move if this is not the case, so we replace the if then with an if then else. Within the else statement, we change y by speed, minus speed divided by 3, the whole multiplied by negative 1. In essence, we're changing the y position by two thirds of the speed. The negative 1 ensures that the clone moves downwards and not upwards. You may be thinking right now that it would just make sense to set the speed variable differently within the set difficulty function. The reason we did not do this is because there will be other sprites like the road marks which will be changing their y coordinates by the speed variable. The road marks will be traveling faster than the cars themselves, so this is necessary for that. There is just one last thing to finish up. If the game setting is not playing and the user is in the lobby, then we delete the clone. This should be fairly obvious. Alright, that's everything that we'll do for this video. If you test out the code by selecting a difficulty and then clicking play, the obstacle car clones should be working. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.